Hey everybody, this is Mike Chi. I'm here to talk about my Laka image that I put together for you guys. It's optimized for a 240p gaming through my component video adapter hat. Um, I put together this image with the uh, custom resolution, so it runs at 1920 by 240. That way, there's a lot of horizontal pixels to go around in case you need to do scaling. Um, and that lets you change the uh, dimensions of the picture without seeing ugly non-integer scaling artifacts. So the download link to the image is um, in the description below. I recommend uh, flashing it to an SD card and then putting your ROMs on a USB stick. Um, I think that's actually easier than trying to put the ROM on the SD card because you need to set up networking and, and, and whatnot. Um, this, this way it's really just plug and play. Now out of the box, the image settings are pretty close to optimal for most, uh, most cores. I'm going to show you how to tweak it to your liking and in case you're using a core that I haven't already played with, um, I'll show you how to adjust the image so that everything looks great. Here I'm going to load up, um, load up, a, um, uh, load up Castlevania because I, uh, I seem to like to use that as a reference point. So you go to load content, start directory, and if you're putting your ROMs on a USB stick, you should see SDA1-USB-the um, dash dash name of your stick. I'm going to go to uh, Nintendo. Let's run. Let's find Castlevania. I'm going to use Nestopia as the core. So again, um, out of the box, the settings are pretty good. Um, it fills up the entire width, width of the screen and um, it's, a, it, it's a good starting point. So out of the box, it looks pretty good, but you'll see a few problems. First, the score on the left-hand side is cut off and I think the image overall might be a little bit higher than it should be. That's all easy to change. In the pre-made image I made for you guys, pressing start and select at the same time brings you, uh, brings you to the menu. So go to, go back up one uh, by pressing the B button and go to settings, video, and, um, and the, the settings you really wanna change are custom ratio X, Y, width, and height. If you watched my previous RetroPie video, um, this might be familiar to you. So the first problem, let's try to get rid of, is the fact that it's, it's too wide. So I'm going to scale this back a little bit. Scale back, scale back. So now you can see that green border. Now I'm going to change the X position so that it's shifted to the right a little bit. I'm looking at the score, and now the entire score is visible. I should probably trim a little bit more. Um, of course, you'll need to adjust this for your TV to your liking. The, um, the most important setting here is that custom aspect height is 240, uh, where it says 1x. Now, depending on the core and how it handles overscan, this will probably be 240 or 224, um, depending on different cores and di different games. The most important thing is that you set the width, uh, the, you set the height so that the number 1x appears. This means that there's no non-integer scaling in the y direction. That's really important because if you combine non-integer height scaling with the scan lines of your CRT, that's really ugly. So, yep. So again, as soon as it's in the right number, you'll see the 1x uh, appear next to it. And again, depending on the, on the core, this number might be different, might be 224 in a lot of cases. So I've adjusted that. And let's go back. Now everything looks pretty good. Um, score, you can see the full text score and uh, nothing is cut off. It's still a little bit high. Um, so I'll go back, go back to settings, video, and you can adjust the X pos position a little bit um, to lower that or raise it depending on TV. Again, all up to you. Um, make it so that it looks nice for your setup. Now the cool thing about running at 1920 by 240 is that you really can't see non-integer scaling artifacts. 
I think this is running at 1850 by nine. Uh, the the width of the uh, width of the uh, screen is now 1850, which obviously doesn't divide into the 256 width of the NES. But again, because there are so many pixels, you don't see the artifacts. Now, once it's to your liking, um, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to do you're going to want to save these settings. Laka can save different core settings for each um, for each of the cores. And what you're going to want to do is go to the menu and select Save Core Overrides. So I've selected this, I'm going to hit A, and you'll see at the very bottom, Override Saves Successfully. If you're using a core where different games need different settings, you can also save the override on a per game basis. I'm not going to do that for the Nintendo, but that does the same thing. Next time you load that game in that core, it'll pull the settings that, you, you've, um, that you've configured. So that's really easy. Um, but, uh, most of the uh, most of the setups done for you. All you really need to do is just tweak the image uh, height, width, and offsets so that it looks good on your screen. So hopefully now we have your video settings um, to your liking. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about how to select um, how to get better sound out of the setup. A lot of you have complained about the quality from the Raspberry Pi's built-in 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and that makes sense. It's a low resolution PW, PWM output, um, they're probably expecting most people to use audio over HDMI. What I've been telling people is to buy a USB sound card, which works a lot better, but the problem with, uh, with that is if you're using a RetroPie, it can be really tough to set up. It took me like an hour to figure out the right config settings. Fortunately in Laka, the process is much easier. Um, you can't see this, but right now I do have a USB sound card plugged into the Raspberry Pi. I'm not using it. It's still being routed through the 3.5 millimeter jack. I'll show you guys how to switch over. So, like before, go to the menu by hitting Start and Select at the same time. Go back one, uh, go back up one menu level. Go to Settings. Go into the Audio Settings, and under Audio Device, you should see a list of different devices. I'm going to switch between them by hitting the left and right buttons. By default, there probably isn't anything there or it's going to say default card equals to ALSA. I'm going to pan over. Um, there are a lot of settings, so it's kind of confusing, but I think the right ones is just go to um, each, of these, each of these different devices and until you find someone that says, until you find the first one that says card um, equals to whatever the name of the device you're using and most importantly, comma dev equal to zero. That's the card you want to use. So I've selected this. I'm going to go back up, go back up, go back, uh, go back out. I'm going to go back into the quick menu, and I'm going to save the core overrides because now I have a different sound card selected. You'll see override saved successfully. Now I'm going to switch um, to a different game. I'm going to switch. Uh, let's just run Super Mario 2 because that causes the core to, uh, core to reboot, which then reinitializes the sound system. You'll hear that uh, it's now coming out of my USB headphones. Not it, could, it's, it should sound very differently. And that's it. Now the audio is routed through USB. So just get a $7 USB sound card uh, at Fry's. Um, I can put a link to the one I'm using in the description. That tends to work really well. Um, you might try a different one if you have one lying around already. But if you don't, again, it's five or seven bucks, get that really cheap, and it's so much better than the built-in audio output. So that concludes this tutorial. Um, so far, I'm pretty impressed with Laka. It's, it was really fast to get up and running. Sound was really easy to configure. I really liked RetroPie in the beginning because it was running on top of Raspbian. Um, I liked having access to all the Linux tools while I was doing the development work, but now that I'm just focused on playing games, I think Laka is much more closer to a plug-and-play solution. If you're using another type of adapter, as long as it's using the display parallel interface, uh, you should be able to use my image without too many modifications. I think basically just modifying the config.txt file so that it has the GERT VGA666 overlay and has the right display output format. Um, hopefully if you're on this adapter or my adapter, this, um, this pre-made image will help you get up and running quickly. Thanks for watching and have fun.